I'm going to show you how to fly the R3 Pro on these buildings here behind me. I'm going to walk you through my whole mission plan, my process, and how to do it. Stay tuned. Let's get into it. So the first thing we want to talk about before we even get the LiDAR or the drone out is mission planning and checking the airspace. So the first thing I'll do is I'll hop onto the internet. I usually go to air map. And I'll make sure that the airspace is clear to even fly drones. Then I get a general understanding of the lay of the land. So here I can just see that this is a building, a parking lot, the airspace looks good. So everything looks good. Now I can come out into the field and begin doing a visual inspection of the job site before I even start mission planning. Now this building behind me, it's got a bunch of walls on it. So naturally I want to be able to capture not only the top of the building, but I also want to capture those walls. So when I'm making the mission plan, I want to think about the LiDAR, it's a laser scanner. I want to go on just the outside of the wall so that way the laser will cast its lasers and capture that wall as I fly by. So those are a couple things you want to think about when you tune the mission plan to capture a building like this. All right, let's go to the next step. Now that we're at the job site, the first thing we're gonna do is set up the base station. Place in the base, you want to think about a couple things. You want to have a clear view of the sky, no obstructions. So don't put it under a tree, don't put it next to a building, and don't put it underneath power lines. A clear, unobstructed view of the sky is necessary. Now, the second thing is if you have a known point or survey monument on your job site, you can put the base station on top of that known point, and that will help you tie your data in in post processing. Well, this looks like a pretty good spot to me. I'm going to go ahead and set up the base station right over here. Now that I have the base station installed, I'm going to go ahead and pop into the Inlet Flow app and log in to the base station. And I'm going to come here to logging. And if it's your first time using this, click on the settings, show configuration, make sure you have one second timing interval, GPS, GLONASS, Beidou, Galileo, all checked for one second. That looks good. And I'm simply going to click start recording. And there we go. Base station's recording data. Now it's time to get the drone out. Real quick though, you'll notice I got the base station out before I even get the drone out of the car. That's because the base station is the first thing to get out of the car and set up, and the last thing you tear down when you get to a job site. If you do that, you'll avoid a lot of headache potential in the future. Let's get the drone out. Now, let's go over installing the R3 on the M300 Pro. This also works for the M350. First, we're gonna install the legs on the M300. So, boom. Boom. Make sure these are locked in nicely. Get the controller out, put it over there. Now the arms you bring out and you lock them in place. Lock them in, looking good. And this is the time where you wanna be inspecting your aircraft. You're gonna make sure there's no nicks on these propellers, make sure they look all clean, nothing's broken, nothing's loose, everything feels tight, the gimbal mount's tight. These balls, the vibration isolators on the gimbal, it's clean and nothing's broken. You can see I have the, uh, the aftermarket Grimsey on here. These are uh, extra weight in your cameras and your sensors. Make sure the fuselage, there's no cracks in anything. We just make sure everything looks good. Um, same thing with your antennas, GPS's, GPS's, antennas. We got some lights on here, and everything looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop two batteries in here. One, and two batteries. That looks good, let's set this off to the side. Now, let's install the R3 Pro. 
So opening the box, the first thing you're gonna see is the R3 Pro here. We have a GPS antenna, and this is the lever arm attachment. So what I'm gonna do is pop off this cover here, take that GPS attachment, I'm gonna put that on right now, and screw that down tightly. Now that's secure. We can take this off. You can see that's the sky port there for the drone. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out now. And we can take off the protective cover of the LiDAR sensor. So now we see the LiDAR, the camera, I'm holding the lever arm attachment. Let's go ahead and install it on the drone. To install it, line up this white dot with the red dot here. And you twist to line up the red dots. And that's it, that's the installation. Now let's put on the GPS onto that lever arm. It simply just goes on and you screw it down. Turning on the M300, click and click and hold. There we go. Now the drone's powered on, we're gonna turn on the R3. So come on over here. Look, right here's the button. You can see there at the bottom. We're just gonna click that button once. Boom, and you can see the light comes on. And that turns on the system. And now it's time to mission plan. Today I'm gonna use the Rock Pilot app, but you can also use the DJI Pilot 2 app, UGCS, or whatever mission control software you'd like to use to control your DJI drone. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the Rock Pilot app. Now, the simplest terms here is that just drawing a polygon is good enough to fly a mission using the R3 Pro and the DJI drone. It's very easy to plan, just draw a polygon where you wanna capture. All you gotta play with is your AGL, height above ground level, as well as that overlap and how fast you're gonna fly. Now, for this area today, it's a building, it's a parking lot. It's not very big, a few acres. I have a battery set in here, so why not just use all that battery to fly this area? So I'm gonna fly a little bit lower and slower than I would if I had 500 acres I need to cover. Just because I have the extra battery, the time in the sky is really not the time that's gonna eat away your mission. It's the time to get to the job site, time to set up. That's the expensive time. So today I'm gonna to go ahead and fly probably about 40 meters AGL. I'm gonna fly 50% overlap. I think that'll be pretty good to capture all of the detail of this building and the site here today. So I'm gonna create a new route, make it a mapping mission. And we can see the building of interest there. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And we will bring in this point here, extend this point back here. that, extend this point, like that, and bring this one back. meter AGL. I'm gonna go a little bit slower just because we can. Okay, I went ahead and made the mission plan and I'm ready to start flying. Now if you use another software other than the Rock Pilot app, you're gonna have to do the calibration flight yourself. And that means when you take off, after you start logging the data, you'll use the one button push start to start logging data, so it's push, push and hold on the R3 and that starts logging data. Now, then you'll go, let it sit there for 30 seconds. You'll take off. You'll fly for a count of five in a straight line. One, two, three, four, five. And that's your kinematic alignment. Then you'll fly a figure eight. After you've done that, you can start your mission and start doing those grid lines back and forth to capture data. The Rock Pilot app will do all of the on the ground stuff. It'll do the calibration flight and the mission plan and come back and land. So you don't have to do anything with that one. But uh, the R uh, DJ Pilot 2 app, you do, and all the other ones you do as well. But let's go ahead and get this up in the air and start flying.
Let's fly. Cool thing about the Rock Pilot app, you can see the data in real time. Pretty cool. So is that gonna automatically return uh, at a set uh, percentage, battery percentage? So it'll return to home based on the battery percentage you set at. So there's like an emergency, basically like at 10%, it starts descending automatically. And that's just a DJI thing. Uh, you can fight it and try flying at home. But then you have like the low battery cutoff and that will automatically trigger the return to home function when the batteries get so low. So there's like two different thresholds. One's like the return to home, battery's getting low. The other one's like, emergency, I'm going to lose battery. I need to get to the ground. Uh, but like a general rule of thumb is like, when you start getting more experienced flying, you can actually look at a flight line and look at the battery percent at the beginning of the flight line, look at the end of the flight line, and kind of calculate that difference. Maybe it lost 8% this flight line, 8% the next one. So now you have a pretty good idea like that next flight line's gonna be 8%. So if you're flying far away from you and then coming back to you, and you want to know, like, it's next to me right now, but where is it going to be at when it comes back? Just use that rule of thumb to calculate that dip per flight line and then calculate it and what will it be when it gets back to me. A little tidbit there. And it's as simple as that. I just finished flying. It's on the ground. It stopped collecting data. Now I'm going to pack up everything. Stop logging data at the base station and take the data on the USB stick from the R3 as well as the data from the base station and bring it back to the Rock desktop and begin processing this data. Pretty simple. And welcome to the office. I got the base station here and I got the USB from the R3 Pro. Let's hop into Rock desktop and start processing the data. Now the first thing I'm going to do is copy that data onto my local machine and then I'm going to go ahead and open up Rock desktop. So here we have Rock Desktop. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Process Rock Data. And we're gonna go ahead and select the folder where our data is located, and then select the base station from the MLID. So here's that observation file, click that. Once I've done that, click Next. And now it's gonna start processing that trajectory. It's combining the base station file as long, along with the R3 data of the IMU and GPS to get a highly accurate trajectory. And this trajectory is what we're gonna to use to project our point cloud from. So this step is all working in the background. It's doing phenomenally. And then it's gonna populate and show us the data right away. It automatically detects and cuts your flight lines. So didn't have to do anything here. But you can see here on the right hand side, I have all these sliders. I can go ahead and just click and drag them. And in real time, you can see the data that's going to be selected and populated when I click next. So really easy, really intuitive. Then I have the angle gate, so which, let's show, let me show you this. So you can actually choose the field of view of your data. So you can in real time, I'm gonna go ahead and click it and I can drag it and see in real time, that's the overlap and field of view of the data that's going to be produced. So for instance, sometimes you fly something really high, like a tower and, and maybe the field of view didn't quite capture it. You can always go, go back and post and open that field of view up to make sure you got that whole tower, that whole structure. So super useful. I'm gonna go ahead and set it just so I have a little bit overlap. I can kind of see it visually here and that's sufficient for me. And then I'm gonna go to the next thing which is called range gate right above that. And so here the range gate is actually the distance from the scanner to the point. So why would you wanna filter that by this? Well, maybe you have points that are really close like a bird flew underneath you, easy to get rid of them. Uh, also, if you did have to open that field of view up really wide well, then you can actually range gate with a wide field of view, so you don't actually get points that go shoot off way off into infinity and get really low accurate data. So once you've selected your angle, your range gate, and the flight lines you'd like, just go ahead and click next. And next step's pretty simple. I'm gonna give it a project name. Let's go ahead and call this one R3 How To Video. And then I'm gonna call it the same thing for the file name, the LAZ, just has to end with .laz. And I have a couple other options here. Uh, simplest thing, just click next. Click start processing and boom. Now Rock Desktop is going to go ahead and produce that point cloud. It's gonna colorize it using all of our color science that we have in the back end. It actually balances all the individual photos. It's a lot of things and ray tracing as well as optimizing your point cloud. So 
once that's done, we're gonna have a visualization of a colorized optimized point cloud here in Rock Desktop. So here it is. That is the final colorized point cloud. And you can see the trajectory, we can see the point cloud. From here, we can go ahead and upload it to the Rock Cloud. Simple to do, click that button on the right and give it a name, give it a little description. Now, when you do it, upload through Rock Desktop to Rock Cloud, it is 10 times faster. So even if you didn't use Rock Desktop to process your data, you should use it anyways to go ahead and drop a file in there and then upload. Because you'll see here, it only takes about three minutes to upload that entire file. That's super fast. That's the huge efficiency. We tailored, tailored these two processes to work together. So it's really awesome. Okay, great. Now it's up in the Rock Cloud. I'm gonna go ahead and view that project and pop here into the Rock Cloud. Now here, once we're here, we can go ahead and add ground control points. We can reproject the data and we can get deliverables ordered for surveyor, planimetrics, we can get power line deliverables, hydrology, anything that's possible once you get into the Rock Cloud, as well as sharing your data sets with your final deliverable, your customer, or within your organization. So it is that simple, guys. That's all you have to do. Uh, that was the A to Z how-to of the Rock R3 Pro. Uh, simple, get on site, make sure you do some mission planning, set up your base station, fly once you land you grab that base station file you grab the usb you bring those two files together use rock desktop a couple clicks away bam 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 you got yourself a colorized point cloud sync it to the cloud add ground control points reproject your data and then order deliverables that's the whole thing that's it a to z nothing hidden that was it i showed you everything so i hope you guys liked the video i hope you found it very informative and then you, you learned something here and if you did, I would really appreciate if you liked and subscribed to this video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you here next time here on Indiana Drones.